Thank you so much, Flory and Ambassador Korn, for your insights into the Africa Outlook 2017. And now we have some great questions. The first question that we have today is, what are some of the challenges a business might face when trying to make inroads into Africa from business competitors, Europe and China? Well, I, I think the, uh, the United States is in pretty good shape uh, in terms of uh, competition. I, I would say that uh, having a lot of experience in the French-speaking countries, I can see where French business certainly has a leg up on the rest of the world. They, they have tremendous experience. There's a good cultural connection between them. Many uh, Africans in the French-speaking countries are educated in France, so they naturally look to French business. And the, the French uh, business community has an equivalent of CCA. It's called CN, and they're, they're very active. But more and more, I, I'm seeing uh, partnerships. Uh, just to give you one example, this company I'm working with, Contour Global, they're partnering now with a French company uh, to do a hydroelectric plant in, in Cote d'Ivoire. So I, I think the major issue for the for American private sector is not so much competition as the environment for good business practices. And where you can have your contracts uh, protected uh, by by a independent court system, that is the greatest attraction for a, any American business. Then, of course, you have things like uh, the risk of exchange rates, and can you can you export your money, uh, your profits when needed? But generally speaking, I I have a lot of confidence in American business to really compete uh, very well uh, in in most African markets. Uh, I remember in the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, there's an American company that just sold their business, their copper mining company, uh, that was Freeport McMoran of Arizona. Uh, they set up this uh, copper mining in the middle of Congo, which has been reported as the most efficient, the most uh, well-developed uh, company with relations with the workers and the workers' housing and workers' education that's ever been seen in Africa. And more and more uh, American companies are getting the reputation as the best companies to do business with in terms of not only economic growth, but in, what, in, the, in the way they treat workers, in the way they train people for executive positions. So more and more African countries are saying, we want the Americans. They're our highest priority. I agree. I, I actually think that, um, uh, first of all, many American businesses, as I, I said earlier, have a, a, a certain reputation and bring certain things to the table um, that perhaps uh, other competitors from other regions, whether China or Europe, um, uh, you know, maybe their, their, their prices might come in uh, uh, lower on, on some of these projects, um, but, but, but American businesses bring um, high value for dollar, and uh, Africans, uh, both in government and, and, and enterprises, are very savvy about that now, and so they're not just looking at who, who can come and bring the lowest prices, but who actually brings value for dollar, um, I've also um, witnessed myself and been told that um, a lot of our products uh, and, 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 and what we offer in terms of services also come with uh, maintenance, which is something that some of the lower priced competitors uh, don't often bring to the table in Africa. And Africans have learned over time that you, you, you may get um, a product or a service, a service at a lower price initially, but ultimately, you may pay more if, in fact, the servicing is 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 not um, uh, not effective. So uh, again, I think that uh, U.S. businesses do face quite a bit of competition in Africa today. Lots and lots of businesses from all around the world are uh, going to that continent. It's you know called the frontier market, you know, uh, last market of opportunity. Um, and you're seeing, you know, everyone there from the Chinese to Malaysians, Brazilians, Indians, 
uh, the French, as Ambassador Cohen said, and other Europeans. Um, and so, you know, that makes sense. It's a growing market. But uh, I, I have no uh, sort of major concerns about whether or not U.S. companies, including members of CCA, um, uh, can compete. In fact, they are competing um, and in many cases winning. I think there's only one area that um, I would uh, focus on that we've heard from, from, from our members and U.S. businesses is that we need to probably develop a little bit more of a one-stop shop for um, our uh, investors so that as they go to uh, uh, countries in Africa to invest in various sectors, that they can bring with them sort of a package of, uh, of, um, of, of support. Uh, so whether it's from the Overseas Private Investment Corporation, OPIC, or working with the uh, MCC, the Millennium Challenge Corporation, or U.S. Uh, Export-Import Bank, um, uh, or uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, investment, the private investors that are going there, institutional investors and others. It would be helpful if we could have a little bit more of a one-stop shop approach, but again, um, I think U.S. businesses are uh, working their way through um, uh, all of the different uh, agencies and opportunities that help them to be competitive in the African market. Uh, I'd just like to add one thing. We were talking before about what's likely to be the policies of the uh, President Trump's administration. There are some voices in the Republican majority in both houses of Congress that we should downplay the work of the OPIC, uh, Office, uh, Overseas Private Investment Corporation, or Exim Bank, because this is just giving subsidies to U.S. companies. They call it corporate welfare. I think that would be the biggest mistake to downplay those companies or to abolish uh, those uh, agencies, because, first of all, they're making money for the U.S. government because they sell insurance, and the loans that they make bring in interest payments, and they make our companies very competitive overseas because other governments do the same thing in helping their companies. So I hope the, the conservatives in our U.S. Congress will take a deep breath and look at these companies and see how much good they're doing for United States business. This is Lee Clegg, and I'd say that uh, the, the U.S. brand in Africa is tremendous, and we owe a debt of gratitude for those companies that have paved the way for Africa because acceptance of US products on the continent is is the very top so it's it's a great opportunity our next question is what impediments do you see for private sector businesses exploring expansion opportunities or relocating operations to Africa and maybe uh, one of you can take this in the second part of that question is which countries are most open to private enterprises from the US so what sectors and what countries well, I, 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 let me just jump in. I, I think that you know all of the African countries would really like to um, have more U.S. investment, from the biggest ones like Nigeria and South Africa to very small ones. I know, for example, I recently had a meeting with the ambassador from Benin, and he had come in because uh, their, their, their president, um, now in, in uh, office about a year, has basically said that all of uh, the uh, Beninese uh, ambassadors to different countries need to be able to bring in two to three investors from um, uh, the countries where they're posted. So uh, I, I think that one of the things that uh, countries are looking at, it, 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 doesn't, um, it doesn't resolve the issue for the smallest countries, but they're looking at uh, regional integration where uh, there are a lot of small economies in Africa and rather than hoping that each of them, rather than hoping that each of these small economies, many of them that are landlocked, would be able to attract investment just into their own economy, that by coming together as regional economic groups of, you know, whether it's uh, 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 ECOWAS in West Africa or uh, SACU in Southern Africa or COMESA um, in Eastern and Southern Africa, um, that that when they provide a larger market, they're able to attract uh, investment into the region, and then that benefits not just one country, but several countries or a number of countries um, in key sectors. So uh, I, I don't know um, uh, 
uh, how much uh, of this is happening, but uh, my sense is that uh, these integration and regional value chains and companies going in to work uh, in one country as a base for how they handle their business in a number of neighboring countries is really uh, the path forward. Um, a lot of a lot of U.S. businesses are are doing that. Well, one thing we have to remember: there are 54 countries in Africa, and there's great variety in how they react to business investors. Uh, there's a World Bank report that comes out annually called Doing Business, and it tells how easy or how difficult it is to do business in certain countries. I was talking to one uh, minister of a country I won't name. I said, well, how, how is it easy is it to start a business in your country? He says, it, it'll take a minimum of two years, and it'll cost you about $100,000. I said, well, that's not very attractive. Uh, companies are not going to come. He says, yeah, we're working hard trying to, trying to change it, but this is our tradition. You know, we, our colonial power, that's the way they were in the 16th century. So it's, it's a great variety, and you'll see those American companies will be drawn for those countries where it's easier and easier, and that's the list we mentioned before, Cote d'Ivoire, Kenya, Botswana, South Africa, uh, Senegal, these are the countries where they make it easy for you. They say, how can we help you? And, and they guide you through it, where other countries, things are very difficult because the bureaucracy is so, so thick. And I think that's the point, that a, a lot of times the impediments are the uh, environment for attracting investment and doing business there. Those are the impediments to companies being able to go into those countries. Uh, uh, if the laws, the regulations um, are, are too difficult or make it too difficult to do business easily there. The next question is, uh, I was surprised there was no mention about Tanzania. Do you see strong Tanzania opportunities for U.S. businesses? So in East Africa, I mean, Tanzania obviously is part of the East African community. There, there are opportunities in each of those five countries. I think that um, traditionally uh, Tanzania's private sector has not been the strongest in that region. Kenya has the most vibrant private sector, but I would say that Tanzania um, has been changing that image over the years. Um, they have a new leadership now. Um, and so I, I think we'll just have to keep our eyes on what uh, President Madhapuli uh, does in terms of ensuring that the business environment in Tanzania continues to grow and open up to investment, not just from, from, from foreigners, uh, you know, FDI, but also uh, regional investment from others there within the EAC. Uh, I just add for Tanzania, I, I spend most of my time on energy, and recently, an American company has found what could be the biggest gas deposit ever found anywhere in Tanzania, in the southern part of Tanzania, a company called Anadarko. And this is going to be a big challenge for Tanzania. What are they going to do with this resource once it starts producing? It will take a few years. Are they going to suffer from the resource curse like so many other oil and gas producers, or are they going to use it wisely? So I'm hoping that when I when I see an African country with a big oil or gas discovery, I say go immediately to Norway. They're the country that knows how to manage this because it's for them it's their main source of revenue also. So uh, I'm I'm kind of optimistic. I think Tanzania, on the basis of what other countries have learned, I think they will become a powerhouse in, in the next ten years. Looks like our time is about up right now. We're so grateful for the panelists. Uh, thank you so much for your wonderful questions and participation for everyone in today's event. And a special thank you to Flory and Ambassador Cohen for being with us today. If you're interested in attending more ABP webinar events, please be sure to visit our website www.africabusinessportal.com slash webinars to register. The next webinar event will be Unlocking the Secrets of the U.S. Lending in Africa. There will be panelists from Exxon Bank, OPIC, and USTDA, and that will be on Thursday, March 30th. It will be an outstanding webinar. We especially want to emphasize and put a plug in for the U.S. Africa Summit, June 13th to 16th in Washington, D.C. Registration will be open soon. 
it gathers tremendous resources from both continents and I think it will be an outstanding event and we would like to encourage you to register for that event as well and we'll try to make that information available to you as the registration is there. So thank you so much for joining us and we hope to see you again next time.